been a while since I recorded myself playing uh, against a slinger bag. So typically I like to start out my routine with um, a handful of volleys up at the net. Today I'm trying to uh, extend my strike point further forward because um, I have a tendency to swing down uh, at the ball. Um, so when the volley occurs too close to my body, I also have a tendency to pop it up because the um, racket face opens up. But when the racket's further out ahead of me, um, especially with my tendency to swing down at the ball, uh, that vertical movement of the racket face um, makes it easier to control the trajectory of the ball. <laughs> Not like that, but makes it easier to tr control the trajectory of the ball uh, with the downward swing, especially when the racket's much further out ahead of me. Uh, rather than impacting the ball closer to my body. So uh, really just um, just trying to extend my arm out as far as I can, um, making it so that uh, the, the tendency to swing down generates backswing or backspin on the ball um, and gives me a little bit better touch because I tend to swing at the ball uh, when I'm volleying and hit the ball out. Obviously, still need a lot of work um, on my footwork, Ideally, you like to um, hit a backhand volley with your right foot stepping forward uh, and then a forehand volley with your left foot stepping forward. But you know me, uh, footwork is my biggest enemy right now. And um, yeah, that uh, white does not look good on me at all. I mean, it, it's not very complimentary to my, uh, my dad bot. Starting to get uh, closer to where I'm actually uh, happy with my ground stroke production. Um, starting to obviously move in between uh, strokes a little bit better. Um, used to kind of just stay stationary between shots. Um, also, uh, I'm starting to feel more confident separating my, my uh, off arm from my forehand. Um, used to see that right there, the, the arms crossing over each other. Um, right now I'm trying to um, do the whole waving to my opponent with my left hand, uh, with my, on my forehand side. Um, <laughs> speaking of uh, stroke production, just hit two straight backhands into the net right there. Um, but actually the backhand's looking much better than, than it used to be. Um, also, I, I've switched to a full bit of mo um, polys right now instead of the hybrid um, that I used to use. Uh, the last tournament, um, I had popped one of my crosses um, during at the beginning. Uh, I think it was like the third game in. Um, and uh, when I came home, I ended up switching out the strings. Uh, so that's a full bit of uh, poly strings. And I think I like it better than the... Than the um, and then the hybrid setup. Um, also, been working on simplifying my uh, my second serve stroke. Um, instead of going into like a rocking motion, I'm staying more uh, straight up. Just basically simplify the toss, just a little um, rocking motion. And then uh, I have my elbow cocked and ready to go rather than bringing it back up. So kind of just trying to make that that swing as easy as compact as co as it possibly can um to see if i could bring my surf percentage up a little bit um if i'm not mistaken uh from the do side in this particular practice session um and this is more or less indicative of most of my practice sessions now um i hit just a little bit over 80 percent of my second serve um there's probably still room for improvement um, especially since a lot of the earlier ones, I'm basically just putting all my my swing speed uh, across the ball for spin. Um, I could obviously kind of alter between the two, either go a little bit flatter um, or maybe do a slice uh, for my second serve. Um, but today I'm mostly concentrating on getting the ball in because um, 
<laughs> funny thing is during the tournament uh, in match play, um, I, I actually um, ended up defaulting to almost exclusively second serves. And the result wasn't pretty. Uh, for some reason, obviously, well, for whatever reason, uh, there's a lot more pressure in, in, um, in a match. Um, while my first serve percentage is, is pretty consistent, my second serve is still kind of sort of work in progress. I've actually learned how to do the first serve, the flat serve first. And then this, um, this whole like slice or um, top spin for second serve, it's, it's all brand new to me. Um, I never really had like a consistent second serve um, or, or a consistent kick serve. Uh, heck, even right now, I don't have a consistent kick serve. I don't even think I have a kick serve. Uh, most of these uh, second serves are kind of sort of hybrid slice and, um, and flat serves. Um, but yeah, um, I defaulted to like just second serving all the time. And uh, like I said, the result wasn't pretty. I, I actually ended up losing quite a few points um, you know, by not being able to consistently execute that second serve, which wasn't even all that great to start with. Um, my daughter actually pointed out to me, because she was there watching, that I had a better first serve that day than the second serves, and I probably should have just go, gone ahead and used my first serve um, as my first serve, um, and I probably would have had um, quite a few more points, um, one just on my first serve alone, because it, it's pretty good. Um, at least for the, the level of play, it was pretty good. Um, but yeah, uh, when there's no you know opponent on the other side and you're just um, kind of relaxed and swinging away, I could I could hit like eighty percent plus on my second serve, and uh, obviously I I like to see that a little bit higher. But um, in conjunction with my first serve, then I would get approximately ninety to ninety five percent of my serves in. Um, given or at least if I was given two serves to start any point um you know 90 percent of the time I would at least get one of the two serves in um given my current serve percentage but anyway this from from the from the uh do side uh my serve percentage is actually significantly higher on the first serve it's closer to like 65 percent from the do side only about 50 percent from the ad side i know so i need to still need to work more from the from the ad side um but for on the second serve though um it's pretty much the same it's like 81 percent from the do side and maybe like 79 percent from the ad side for my second serve um and um you know i i think right now i'm pretty confident to say like if the toss is good the serve is most likely good uh, especially on the second serve but you know, just looking at the last 10 to 15 tosses, I still, out of 10 tosses, I'm going to have like two or three errant tosses. Um, and, you know, that's something else that my daughter pointed out uh, watching me play uh, in tournament was that I have a tendency to swing at the bat tosses. You know, for whatever reason, obviously, like during match, you don't want to, you know, sit there and toss like five or six times just to get that perfect toss. So a lot of times I would go after a toss that drifted a little bit too much further to the right or a toss that went too far forward. And the result would be, you know, the ball, a song, a second serve, the ball would be in the net. And sure enough, that's a double fault. So, um, but yeah, when there's no pressure, um, it's easy to make the second serve. Um, it, and I also noticed because uh, my daughter's my practice partner too. Um, and when I'm playing with her, there's no pressure. There's no added pressure of playing a tournament or a match that matters. I tend to make also a higher percentage of my serves versus when I'm actually in a match. So that's definitely something that I also have to work on more is just to continue to play more tournaments, um, play other different opponents, play with the people I'm not familiar with. Um, just as a way to kind of, you know, find a way to mentally work through that pressure uh, of the unknown or the points that matter uh, to break through and be able to execute no matter, no matter the amount of pressure. Um, but obviously, the more I hit, um, the better I get, then um, the easier it is to deal with the pressure. Um, because I've been just looking at what my second serve percentage is now versus, like, say, six months ago. You know, six months ago, if I was able to hit 60% of my serves on the second serve, I'd be ecstatic. 
Um, but today, walking away, knowing I made close to 80% of my second serve, I was still a little angry that I wasn't hitting better. Um, or at least at 80%, I'm actually having to give up a lot of pace on my second serve in order to achieve that percentage too. So yeah, um, you know, no matter how... This is like a funny sport. Like no matter how good you think you are in terms of compete comparing yourself to where you used to be, there's always room for improvement. You always know there's someone who's better than you. Um, and even people who don't even think who is better than you, they could beat you on any given day. Like if they're having a really good day and you're having a terrible day at your, uh, you know, if your second serve's not working or whatever, there's still a pretty good chance you might lose. So there is always room for improvement, especially like for me, uh, you know, uh, even though I'm somewhat happy with my ground strokes and getting a little bit happy with my serves, I still probably need to go out there and every day and hit. This this is like the bane in my existence, that, that high loopy uh, moon bulb to the backhand side. Um, is you know, um, if I'm playing against, like say, you know, a coach or even now Mallory doesn't, always hit these back you know moon balls the backhand side she's actually starting to drive her backhand um a lot more and putting pressure uh in terms of time and pace um but but that that i can handle actually i actually like it better when there's uh when when the backhand doesn't come so high and and um you know it's a little bit flatter but has a lot more pace that i can handle all day long because i can either slice it back or you know, uh, I'm confident enough with now with my drive backhand to be able to handle that. But man, that, that moon ball um, to the backhand side, gosh, like, especially during a tournament. Uh, I've, played, I've now played two tournaments, and that, that's like, you know, the second I see that coming, I start panicking because I have no idea how to handle that, especially with that one-handed backhand. Um, you know, I either have to back way the heck up and then just drive it, uh, like I'm doing now, or what I was doing earlier was actually taking it on the bounce at the rise so that I don't let it get above my shoulders because then once it's, once it gets up to my shoulder height, it's slight city because there's no other way for me to handle it uh, from a one-hander perspective. Um, you know, if, if I had like a two-hander backhand, this, this would, I guess, wouldn't be such a big um, problem. Um, but, you, you know, you, you, you work with what you got. Uh, this is the other shot that was driving me crazy uh, during the tournament um, was a lot of times I would get shots that are just short um, and they tend to come back with uh, no spin so or, or very little spin so they tend to not just bounce up um, and I, I, I struggle when the ball does not come up past the knee um, especially if it's short I tend to hit it either into the net and a little flat just like that or oh, I drive it way past the baseline because I had to get the racket face down and open in order to get the ball up. Um, uh, and that and the fact I'm just not comfortable uh, moving forward all the time. Um, I'd rather stay, stay back and just, you know, play, play pace with pace. Um, so when, you know, say I hit a big shot and uh, a big forehand, the ball comes back um, to me uh, short, I don't always quite know what to do with it. So set up the machine to feed me shorter balls. Um, one thing that I've been uh, wanted to try today was actually uh, if the ball dips below my knee on a shorter ball like this to actually use a forehand slice uh, to get the ball back um, either short, especially since a lot of times they would hit it short if I hit them, um, you know, big forehand and they would just block it back and then they would block it back short. So trying out the forehand slice just to see if, uh, if it's like a, maybe a solution for one of these shorter balls that um, dips below the knees. And, and just to show that I could actually hit a second serve from the, from the ad side. Uh, I know like <laughs> my brother mentioned like whenever he watches my video of me doing serve, it's almost always from the do side. And um, I don't know, for whatever reason, I'm just more comfortable serving from the do side. The ad side has always been a... Um, kind of a challenge to me because of the angle, I guess. Uh, it's easier to swing the racket across your body 
um, and to generate that angle rather than to swing uh, and try to get the ball to go to the right um, unless I stand with a very, very extreme stance. And I don't. I have a pretty typical stance where you know my right my back foot is only slightly offset from my front and my front foot's pointing to uh you know the doubles alley so i don't i don't stand like you know um with the foot basically parallel to the baseline uh and and therefore it's hard for me to um generate that same swing path for the ball to go to the right um and especially since i have that funky step toward right i i step um, past the pinpoint stands um, so uh, it's hard for me to stay sideways um, which is you know something that I've been trying to work on but it's like 30 years worth of you know muscle memory sort of ingrained into the beginning of my um, my uh, my stroke so um, but you know I, actually uh, when it's all said and done my second year from the at side today um, was just like a couple of points shy of, of 80%. Um, I think I made like one more shot from, from the due side uh, than the asset on the second serve. Um, but you'll see later, like, I still can't, I still can't quite get that first serve down. Um, the, the, the first serve from the ad side has the biggest variability. Like there are days where I could hit, you know, 65, 70%. Um, and I felt great you know, um, with the big first serve from, from the ad side and there are days like this where, you know, um, if you want to fast forward, I mean, I missed my first five shots, uh, of my first serve from the ad side. Um, none of these are edited to, you know, edit out the bad shots. This is pretty much my, you know, my entire serve routine today. Um, but funny enough, um, I actually had a longer streak uh, of serves made from the ad side, even though this is the the less comfortable of two sides for me to serve from. Um, I made ten shots in a row from um, from the ad side, whereas I only made nine shots in a row from from the do side. Um, but just overall, like there's a little, um, I don't know what it is. Like during an extended period of of practice, I either lose focus or I go into this funk where um, three or four tosses in a row would just like sail left to right. I have the zero control, a little control over where they go. And, you know, it's good that I'm looking at these videos because I can now uh, slow down the frames and almost stop it and go frame by frame. And I actually picked up something that I actually kept my elbows bent as I, to I was tossing. Um, where I, when you're doing it in person, I keep thinking my elbow is perfectly locked and straight and it's not, you know, moving around. But, you know, now that I'm seeing myself hitting balls on the video screen, I realize that my arms aren't locked straight. At the beginning it is, but I bent it back uh, as I initiate the tossing phase. Um, so yeah, that's probably something else I need to uh, keep in mind of and work on. Um, but you know, the funny thing is like before watching the video, I, I have always reminded myself that my arm, my elbow needs to almost be locked and not be moving around. Yet, you know, and I think like when I'm hitting the ball in real life and in uh, real time, I didn't think I had my elbow moving. But again, looking at the video, I realized that my tossing motion is actually what's making it inconsistent, even though this whole time I thought I had fixed it. So, yeah, um, more more stuff to work on. Um, but but I am getting better at not wanting to swing at every toss like. I, I do stop myself and thought, okay, if it's drifted, you know, more than three or six inches to the right, then I can't put the same kind of spin. I can't put, you know, either the top spin on it, uh, and it's too far to the right for me to slice, then I'll basically just let it drop, uh, especially on a second serve. On the first serve, actually, I could, I could swing at a ball that's easily six to eight inches away from my usual strike zone um, because of that sidewinder motion that I have on my on my swing, um, I could actually on my first serve hit a ball that's poorly tossed better than I could do it on a second serve. The second serve would almost have to be um, almost straight up or even a little bit to the left of uh, my head in order for me to get a good second serve going. If it's anywhere more than three to six inches to the right on the toss, 
there's no hope of me getting that second serve in. So now I've kind of sort of learned not to, or at least suppress that urge to want to swing at every toss that I, that I throw out there and only kind of sort of look for the ones I think I could execute a good serve from. Um, but <laughs> still, like, that was actually a pretty good toss, and I still hit that in the net. Um, so there's there's a little bit of, um, I think I think what it is is uh, on my second serve, um, I actually don't have as much margin as I think there is. Uh, I tend to kind of only clear the net anywhere between three to six inches. I don't give that. I don't get that like almost a foot worth of height above the net. Um, just again, uh, either I put too much pace on the ball or not enough top spin. Um, just because my, I guess my swing path, uh, by virtue of me not being able to keep my body. Uh, sideways into the spin uh, into the shot because I take that big step forward um, see that was actually pretty good I didn't step too far past that pinpoint stance and I could keep my body sideways um, but by virtue of by virtue of that it's hard for me to actually put real top spin on the shot like it basically I don't know what it is kind of a sort of fake top spin is what I call it um, but yeah like this is this is my bread and butter um, I'm still working on um, kind of, uh, I don't remind myself of this uh, mentally, but occasionally, like if you ever play with me or like if you're my doubles partner or whatever, you'll hear me say to myself, get on top, get on top, get on top. Um, sometimes uh, when my shot goes haywire is when I sort of just slap at the ball and I didn't get on top of the ball and it just sailed long. Um, even if it's by a few inches. Um, so I also almost always have to remind myself, especially on these first serves, is if it's a good toss, I need to absolutely... And I, when I say get on top of the ball, I don't mean like hit down on it. I, I, I need to hit the ball. Um, if you imagine the ball as a clock face, um, but not necessarily a clock face. Like instead of striking the ball dead center on my first serve, I need to strike it maybe slightly above that. Um, in order to uh, effectively bring the ball down. And um, Coach Homer brought this up a few times, and he's absolutely right. I'm six foot tall. Um, not not tall uh, for a tennis player by, by any stretch of the imagination, but at six feet um, uh, with such a high toss and a decent reach on top of an extended racket that's half an inch longer than the typical racket. And the fact that I almost grip it with a finger off the, uh, the butt of the grip right now that I could really hit the ball at a much higher apex um, and, and then, um, you know, like, than a shorter guy could. Um, so I, I really should effectively, um, you know, I, I shouldn't have to uh, hit the ball parallel to the ground in order to clear the net. I could easily um, hit the ball with a couple of degrees of downward motion. So basically maybe uh, like, two to three degrees above center on the ball to bring the ball down in order to increase pace um, and also make it bounce higher because when I slap at the ball from a lower trajectory then the ball kind of never comes up like sometimes you'll see um, uh, you know some of my serves especially if I just slap at it at a lower angle that it kind of you know it won't it won't single bounce to the fence is simply because um, the ball never had that 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 downward trajectory. It's kind of just barely clearing the net with a much smaller margin of error. But if I could just kind of remind myself time and time and time again on my first serve to get like maybe a couple of just couple of degrees above the center of the ball when I strike it on a flat serve, it'll really effectively um, you know not only give me a bigger margin of error because the ball's now coming down from a higher angle, uh, if I could just maybe strike a couple of inches higher uh, than my usual slap, uh, but then that, that couple of degrees of downward motion would actually effectively also give me a higher velocity uh, as well as a higher bounce, making the first serve a little bit harder to return as well. Uh, otherwise, like if, it's a, if I'm just slapping the ball, the ball actually ended up coming up off the bounce right into the receiver's strike zone. So I've actually seen this a couple of times when I'm playing doubles um, where, you know, I'm, I, I thought I hit a fantastic serve and all the returner had to do was just put his racket out there 
uh, right in where his typical strike zone would be and just, you know, block the ball back uh, using my pace to his advantage, um, you know, just basically returning all my pace back to me. And, you know, <laughs> instead of, you know, me hitting a winner or like uh, hitting a ball that he can't, he or she can't return, they ended up returning the ball back to me at a significant pace, winning the point. So I need to find uh, um, a way to take advantage of the fact uh, that for my level, I can uh, see there's, there's that stretch where I would go into my little funk tossing the ball. Um, but I absolutely need to find a way to generate that advantage uh, by not only being able to hit the ball with a higher velocity than the players that I usually play with and uh, people at my level, but also be able to uh, generate that downward pace so that the ball would bounce up higher uh, outside of their usual strike zone that they're comfortable with to maybe earn a few free points on my serves as well. Um, but all in all, you know, I think if I recall, I made two out of every three, so 67% uh, from the ad side, and I made one out of every two from the do side on my first serves today. So averaging about 60%, um, had this been a match, it'll probably be lower, but uh, if you aggregate the two serves together, then I would obviously for a two serve point, uh, get my serves in at approximately 90% of my serve uh, or 90% of the point. Um, so yeah, this is a particularly good serve day, uh, even though there's no pressure of playing out a point uh, or a match or a tournament that matters. So it's a, lot of, a little bit easier to do um, when you're just swimming freely with no pressure. Um, but like I said earlier, um, you know, if I, if I keep doing this and it's starting to become muscle memory, uh, then it wouldn't matter uh, even when I'm, I should be able to do this even when I'm nervous, uh, even when I feel pressured, um, at least to a better degree than I did over the past, uh, like in a tournament when I get so nervous that the swing and the mechanic sort of default back to what I was doing like almost two years ago. Um, so, uh, you know, I guess the more I practice, the more I play, the more I do this, um, the more likely that I will be able to execute um, under all circumstances. Um, but yeah, I'm, this, this is one of the better uh, practices uh, that I have had where I thought um, most of my stroke uh, productions were satisfactory. I haven't had any sort of real regression from where I was doing before where like say, you know, shots are sailing long for no reason or I can't figure out why, you know, the balls are going to the net or whatever. Um, even when I do make mistakes like that where one goes on, I knew exactly like that toss was a little low, right? So I hit the ball low, ended up slapping it. Therefore, the trajectory changes. Um, it went flat um, and straight uh, and low. So um, in order to clear the net, um, I had to flatten out the trajectory on that. But here's the, uh, here's the search on the ad side. Um, so what I probably should have done here is kind of also do the same thing, like remind myself I need to get a little bit on top of the ball, like not strike it dead on center. Especially from the ad side, um, I think um, uh, just because of the target I was aiming for, sort of the body serve on the ad side, there is probably more of a margin for error in terms of uh, net clearance. Since I stand, tend to have a larger, bigger angle, I stand closer to the left-hand side of the, or the center of the uh, ad court, rather than from the due side, I stand almost right on top of the center of the court. Um, so from this particular angle, there's actually more clearance. Uh, the net's a little bit lower where it's crossing over the net, as opposed to my usual surf on the, from the due side. So I should be able to drive a little bit more on the top of the ball uh, and still be able to clear the net um, to give me that margin there. Those first four shots, I mean, they were long maybe by about, I don't know, three inches tops. Um, uh, yeah, so I think I just need to, uh, I think at this point, at some point I figured it out. So I actually went on a pretty long streak uh, a little bit later on um, and eventually brought my uh, surface percentage back up to about 50%, all said and done. Um, 
But yeah, I did eventually figure out that I could potentially um, get a little bit further on top of the ball, uh, especially for for serving from the outside. Um, but these are just little things I'm continuing to work on my stroke. Um, things I need to remind myself when I'm in, you know, either playing points or in the match um, or playing doubles on, on Wednesday night that, um, that kind of trust my swing. Um, uh, but also remind myself that I have to make these little adjustments from one side to the other. The same swing is not going to work. Uh, the same swing works from the ad side. That won't necessarily work on the do side. Just because a, on the ad side, you're swinging across the body or at least trying to get the ball to go across the other side. Um, uh, and from the ad side, you're, you know, just the way I stand, the way I, I um, initiate my swing, it's just not conducive. Uh, to the same result, so just there, I have to remind myself there. You, there's, there's, it's two physically different shots that you're serving from the outside and serving from the do side. They're not the same exact shot. You have to make some adjustments. At least I do. Um, yeah. So um, stuff to work on uh, for for thought. But uh, I'm hoping to be able to play another tournament sometime in July and see if I could. Uh, at least be able to get some semblance of consistency uh, not only on the serves but also uh, uh, figure out like some of these ground stroke uh, especially when I'm playing points like I uh, when I play doubles you only cover half the court so there's not so, um, as much moving as you would do in a singles uh, match but when I'm playing singles I really have to be cognizant to be ready to move and cover as much of the court as possible not saying you don't do that for doubles i mean you do do that for doubles but in singles uh there's a lot more court coverage you have to be uh quicker in your feet you have to always constantly be moving um and then on top of that the you're not just covering you know horizontally across uh the court you're also moving vertically you have to move up and back uh at a moment's lowness um so those are those are things i have to continue to work on um and uh you know thank god for for the slinger you could kind of sort of sit up to simulate that kind of shots <laughs>